Between April and June of this year, more than one in five malware attacks tracked by the cybersecurity firm Mimecast targeted the professional education industry. The sector was far and away the highest hit by spam campaigns, garnering 21.5% of the attacks. IT and software as a service came in second place down at 8.87. Mimecast published these results in their Mimecast Threat Intelligence Report. During the period, the company tracked 160 billion emails, 67 billion of which were malicious. Hi, my name is Henry Kronk for eLearning Inside. This is Ed Technically. This week, I'm going to talk about the growing cybersecurity threat in education and some of the findings from the Mimecast report. So by Mimecast definition, professional education includes, quote, private educational companies, colleges, institutes, and training providers, end quote. These are like for-profit colleges, boot camps, online learning, uh, professional training, micro learning providers. It's a broad field. It's a field that companies are increasingly turning to to skill their workers. And it's also presenting an increasingly vulnerable target for hackers. Mimecast detected a concentration of cybersecurity threats specifically between May 6th and May 9th. And it seemed to them that it was a, somewhat of a coordinated attack. The campaign relied primarily on the malware known as Adwind, also known by some as JRAT. Adwind was first detected in December of 2014, and the firm says it, quote, recently updated its attack methodology, end quote. The firm suggests that Adwind was used in this way because professional education typically sees consistent movement of students through their program. As the authors write, quote, research suggests that the sector's attack rate was significantly higher than others due to constantly changing student populations that are unlikely to have high security awareness and the potential for attackers to get access to personal data. Attackers may also recognize that such educational institutions are harder to defend because of the apparent conflict between their inherent openness for academic reasons and the need to protect high-value research conducted for government and industry partners." End quote. Mimecast discusses four main styles of malicious attacks in their report. These are spam, impersonation attacks, targeted attacks, and opportunistic attacks. As the researchers write, quote, the most unusual activity seen during the research period targeting this sector was a massive increase in blocked spam threats on April 16th, 2019, jumping to a peak more than eight times higher than the normal daily volume. A similar spike was observed on May 20th, or targeted attack threats, but even at the peak, volume was significantly lower than the other threat types. Research revealed that this spike was related to zip files that contained malicious Microsoft Office, Excel, or Word files that downloaded a Trojan linked to the TA505 threat actor group." End quote. Zooming out, Mimecast identifies several trends in the evolving tactics of hackers targeting professional education and other sectors. The authors write that the hackers are tending to expand both their simple, quote-unquote, lowest common denominator attacks, along with their highly sophisticated probes using, quote, obfuscation, layering, and bundling of malware in an effort to avoid detection, end quote. But in their conclusion, the authors write, quote, even the simple is becoming more complex. This is certainly the case for attack vectors and needs to be the case for an organization's security controls as well, end quote. Mimecast recommends every business and institution maintain robust cybersecurity training and practices among its members. 
The analysis of cybersecurity in the professional education sector mirrors previous conclusions and warnings. In September of last year, the Federal Bureau of Investigation issued a public warning that cybersecurity threats were increasingly targeting primary and secondary schools. The Bureau reportedly identified numerous cybersecurity events and attacks at districts around the U.S. In a PSA issued at the time, the FBI warns, quote, They access student contact information, education plans, homework assignments, medical records, and counselor reports, and then use that information to contact, extort, and threaten students with physical violence and release of their personal information. The actor sent text messages to parents and local law enforcement, publicized students' private information, posted student private information on social media, and stated how the release of such information could help child predators identify new targets. In response to the incidents, the Department of Education released a cyber advisory alert stating cyber criminals were targeting school districts with weak data security or well-known vulnerabilities to access sensitive data from student records to shame, bully, and threaten children, end quote. Institutions of education, whether private or public, present a big target to hackers, and because students move through them often more quickly than employees at a company or organization, instilling best cybersecurity practices presents a greater challenge. To get a link to the copy of the full report, please see the story documenting this report on eLearning Inside, to which there is a link in the description below this episode. This has been Ed Technically. My name is Henry Kronk. I'm the editor at eLearning Inside. If you like this episode, please rate and review. If you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. Also, keep in mind that this show is available as a video on our YouTube channel and also as a podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. The basic content for this video first appeared as an article on eLearning Inside, and if you would like to hear more about online courses, technology in the classroom, and edtech in general, please be sure to check out our site. If you'd like to get in touch with me, send an email to henry at elearninginside.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at elearninginside. Thanks for listening.